Thank you, Mr. Ambassador, for giving us time in this uh, critical time of U.S.-Pakistan relationship. How would you characterize Pakistan's relationship uh, with new government of Taliban in Afghanistan? First of all, I think uh, you are right and uh, the activities that uh, you have listed uh, in terms of uh, our reach out uh, to the immediate uh, neighbors of Afghanistan, our foreign minister's earlier visit, uh, to uh, all the key countries in the region and then our participation uh, in uh, the meeting that was uh, co-convened by uh, Secretary Blinken and uh, the German Foreign Minister. I think it really reflects uh, uh, international uh, communities' uh, concern uh, and interest both uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, and uh, we, like uh, others, uh, are closely following uh, developments uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, I think what is uh, really important is uh, uh, and uh, I would say encouraging is that uh, clearly uh, a civil war uh, and uh, violence uh, has been averted. Uh, there is uh, uh, a government in place uh, in Afghanistan uh, and, and really I think today uh, Afghanistan is at an inflection point and the and, uh, international community uh, has to make a determination uh, on uh, whether to engage with Afghanistan or to abandon Afghanistan uh, because both uh, approaches uh, will have consequences. Of course, you talked about the international community wants to engage with Af Afghanistan, but the concerns of the international community and, of course, America and Pakistan is that uh, the Afghanistan's uh, will be used uh, for terrorist activities by Al-Qaeda and ISIS-K, which is emerging. And at, in this uh, juncture, how willing is Afghanistan to work with Pakistan to work against the banned uh, elements like TTP and others? You know, again, I think uh, it's still uh, too early uh, to, to uh, talk about uh, uh, specific uh, uh, areas of uh, engagement because uh, the situation clearly is, is, is fluid uh, and uh, it's uh, developing and evolving. Uh, but uh, we have uh, clearly uh, laid out uh, our expectations uh, of uh, what we would like uh, to see in Afghanistan and uh, also uh, our consistent uh, support uh, for the peace process in Afghanistan uh, these past uh, few years uh, is indicative of Pakistan's interest. Uh, in seeing that uh, uh, there is peace in Afghanistan because uh, if uh, uh, we are unable uh, to have or if Afghans are unable to have uh, peace and stability in Afghanistan, Pakistan has faced the consequences of conflict uh, and, and that is something that uh, we are very keen to avoid. Uh, we have seen uh, that uh, when you don't have uh, uh, a, a government that uh, has control across Afghanistan, uh, there would emerge, uh, you know, ungoverned spaces. Uh, and those ungoverned spaces then get populated uh, by uh, uh, terrorist elements. Uh, that's why we believe that it is important uh, to have uh, a government in Afghanistan uh, that works as a partner with the international community uh, and uh, makes sure uh, that Afghan territory is not used uh, against uh, any of its neighbors and uh, other countries uh, uh, beyond the region. How confident Pakistan government or Pakistan's foreign ministry is that this is going to happen? Well, uh, we, uh, we uh, will uh, continue to monitor this situation. Uh, we uh, believe that uh, the Taliban leadership has uh, given those uh, commitments. Uh, uh, we uh, are uh, basically, we will continue to track that. Uh, we are, uh, uh, you know, uh, confident that uh, given uh, the, the, the commitments uh, and uh, the frequency with which they have stated those commitments, uh, they will certainly uh, honor and respect those commitments. 
Okay, and um, of course, um, U.S.'s uh, concern is uh, to bring back uh, the few citizens, a couple of hundred left in Afghanistan. Today, a flight of 200 passengers uh, was allowed to leave, uh, but like uh, not Afghan, Afghans were not on there. Uh, only U.S. citizens and international citizens uh, were allowed. So how uh, Pakistan is assisting uh, American, uh, uh, you know, organizations or America's uh, effort to bring back the citizens from Afghanistan and with the documentation and manifest of uh, the flights uh, procedure. How, how you, uh, Pakistan is helping that process? Well, Pakistan uh, has uh, been uh, supporting, uh, facilitating and helping uh, with the evacuation uh, process. Uh, and so far, uh, we have uh, actually helped uh, over 13,000 uh, uh, people uh, wanting to leave uh, Afghanistan, so they have uh, basically transit through, transited through Pakistan. Uh, and that includes uh, uh, nationals of uh, almost 26, 27 countries. That also includes Afghans. Uh, and uh, uh, with the suspension of uh, the air operations uh, from uh, the Hamid Karzai airport, Earlier, you know, uh, uh, people also transited uh, through the land borders, those that uh, have uh, appropriate uh, documentation. Uh, they were facilitated and allowed to transit through Pakistan to third country destinations. Uh, and and uh, uh, we uh, remain committed uh, to facilitating uh, uh, all those who wish to uh, evacuate out of Afghanistan. Uh, now, in terms of uh, who can come out and who cannot come out, uh, this is uh, a, a decision and determination uh, to be made uh, by uh, the, the people in charge uh, in Afghanistan. But so far as Pakistan is concerned, uh, we have actually, uh, our embassy has been working overtime. Uh, we uh, have issued uh, visas. Uh, we are also uh, allowing uh, issuing visas on arrival uh, to foreign nationals and those who have valid documentation for third countries uh, to, to give them visas on arrival also. So we have so far in every possible way tried to facilitate and that number is uh, uh, over 13,000 out of which uh, close to uh, nine to 10,000 have already transited to third country destinations while others are in the process. Great. And as far as you know, um, is the U.S. asking uh, the Taliban government to allow personnel on the ground to verify the passengers, their documentation, and uh, of course the flight manifests, and how willing are Taliban to help this process? Again, that's why, uh, as I said in the beginning, that, uh, uh, you know, uh, that is uh, a determination uh, that uh, we and everyone uh, uh, outside of Afghanistan has to make. Uh, because uh, if we adopt uh, the engagement approach, uh, then uh, we can basically uh, discuss uh, and talk about uh, the logistical challenges that uh, those wishing to travel outside uh, are facing, you know, that uh, have been resolved because, uh, you know, while the question of recognition uh, is, is, is separate, uh, but uh, engagement and uh, almost all countries are uh, uh, in their own way already engaging. Uh, and that engagement uh, uh, has uh, helped uh, to resolve uh, uh, issues and challenges that, uh, uh, you know, they faced in terms of evacuating their citizens. And uh, so far as I understand, Taliban have also uh, shown receptivity uh, and understanding uh, and have been forthcoming uh, in, in uh, basically addressing those concerns. And the fact uh, that uh, uh, this morning, uh, another flight carrying uh, foreign nationals, including U.S. nationals, has, has come out of Afghanistan, I think, uh, is a reflection uh, of the fact that uh, engagement uh, is productive and that uh, it is helping to resolve challenges that we are facing. And, uh, of course, Pakistan sent uh, uh, the first batch of aid to Pakistan and China also announced uh, it will get to China. but. As far as Pakistan's uh, economic interest concerns, what are the 
big economic interests of Pakistan in Afghanistan? I think we have all, all along uh, maintained that uh, uh, while uh, conflict impacts us adversely, uh, it uh, undermines uh, Pakistan's uh, potential to act as a transit hub. Uh, it uh, undermines uh, our uh, wider uh, regional connectivity related ambitions. Uh, so, and it was with that intent that uh, we consistently supported uh, uh, the peace process in the hope that we will get peace and stability in Afghanistan. So, uh, clearly, and I think also, uh, Sake, what is really important to uh, understand and appreciate uh, is that uh, we will not uh, be able to have long-term peace and stability uh, in Afghanistan unless and until we help Afghanistan transition from a war-centered economy uh, to uh, a normal economy. And if, uh, uh, because uh, US uh, was practically sustaining uh, the government and the economy, and with that uh, support gone, uh, I think uh, if everything else were to uh, uh, be uh, put aside, this alone would put uh, the government, any government in Afghanistan under a lot of stress. And, and that's why I believe it is, it is important uh, for us to see because uh, if uh, uh, the international community uh, chooses to abandon uh, Afghanistan, the consequences uh, uh, will be uh, unfortunately disastrous and, and most uh, uh, immediately uh, you know, it will and it can potentially result uh, in a refugee crisis because when people will not get food, people will not have jobs to go to, people will not be able to provide basic sustenance to their families. They will look for uh, alternative uh, destinations, you know. So we have fortunately so far not seen uh, the refugee exodus uh, the way everybody feared. Uh, which is again a reflection of the fact that the violence has been averted, civil war has been averted. Now it's really a question of creating those opportunities. And uh, by uh, basically working with Afghanistan uh, and the government in Afghanistan uh, by way of engagement, we can uh, avert uh, that exodus, uh, 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 that anticipated or expected, uh, because uh, all neighbors would get affected. Uh, and uh, everyone beyond the region uh, will also get affected. And uh, something that you said in the beginning, you know, our foreign minister's visit in the region uh, and the broad consensus that uh, we have heard and seen in the region in terms of concern over instability uh, in Afghanistan also gives us the hope that uh, the region and uh, uh, other key countries, including Russia, China, United States, uh, are ready to come together uh, to, to work uh, to create conditions uh, that would not result in uh, people wanting to leave. Yes, of course, you talked about China. So uh, one Pakistani senator said uh, last week that China is willing to invest 14 billion in uh, Afghanistan's infrastructure and uh, stuff. Uh, there were no indication, of course, China is reluctant to do that, but like once you look at the CPAC or the BRI uh, uh, endeavors, uh, of course, uh, it looks like there is some opportunity there. So does Pakistan uh, facilitate such endeavors from China? Again, I think it is uh, not uh, uh, for us uh, to uh, uh, facilitate uh, what uh, third countries wish to do uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, they. Uh, have a government uh, and a government uh, uh, whose leaders are in touch uh, with uh, the countries in the region uh, and beyond. Uh, and uh, I'm sure they will make uh, those determinations. But so far as we are concerned, as I have said, that uh, we are keen uh, to see uh, Afghanistan integrate economically uh, with the region. We are keen uh, to tap into possibilities and opportunities that a peaceful Afghanistan would offer. And I think above everything else, Saqib, I think it's really at the end of the day, it is the people of Afghanistan who are at the heart of it. And I think having seen nothing but conflict for the past 40 years, I think they deserve a break. And it is, it is our responsibility 
uh, to give them that possibility and opportunity uh, by providing that critical support that they would need. Uh, and a peaceful uh, and a prosperous Afghanistan uh, will be an asset for the region. You uh, do talk to your uh, Chinese counterpart here and of course uh, do, do you see any indication that China has expressed some concerns over uh, whatever happened in the last couple of weeks in Afghanistan and uh, have they asked or is Pakistan willing to protect Chinese investment if it happens in Afghanistan? Again, okay, it's not for me uh, to basically, I mean, we have a strong relationship uh, uh, with China and uh, the Taliban delegation was in Beijing uh, and uh, Taliban are talking to, to, to everyone, to Chinese, to Russians, to United States, to Iran uh, and others. So uh, it's really uh, not for me uh, uh, to say, but our bottom line, as I said, uh, is to peace, uh, to see peace and stability because that helps uh, uh, everyone. And, and, and we are absolutely convinced uh, that uh, the size of the pie is large enough uh, for all of our countries uh, to be able to share. Uh, and the peace dividend uh, is, is good enough and large enough uh, for our countries to cooperate. So investment, uh, and I'm sure I cannot speak for uh, the Afghanistan uh, government, but uh, uh, I'm sure they would not want to exclude any country, uh, any country that is interested in investing uh, in Afghanistan. Of course, and uh, last uh, couple of question about opium uh, cultivation, poppy cultivation is one of the most lucrative uh, source of income for Taliban. And it puts also a very big concern for, uh, you know, uh, for Afghanistan, I said. And it's also a big concern for international community. And of it, of course, it spills over to Pakistan as well, this uh, heroin and uh, opium, uh, you know, uh, uh, trade. So do you think that uh, Pakistan is hopeful that Taliban will stop this? They try to do it back in 2000 when they were in power uh, and what Pakistan can do to uh, help Taliban uh, stop the opium cultivation and of course the drug trade? Uh, I think uh, first of all uh, Pakistan uh, itself has a stellar record uh, in, in terms of uh, eliminating uh, poppy uh, from our territory over the years. Uh, and uh, we have worked closely with the international community because we are as much concerned as others are uh, about uh, uh, the potential for uh, uh, opium uh, uh, production uh, in Afghanistan. And then that again brings me to that central question of uh, what uh, uh, abandonment uh, uh, could produce in terms of consequences and what uh, promise engagement offers. And I think uh, OPM uh, is a concern for uh, every country in the region. Uh, OPM uh, will be a concern uh, uh, for uh, countries beyond the region also. Uh, and, and that's where uh, we need to engage uh, uh, with the government uh, to make sure because Taliban have uh, in the past uh, uh, clearly declared uh, their desire to make Afghanistan a poppy free country you know and they even had implemented that also uh, we uh, uh, look forward to uh, seeing them uh, you know uh, enforce uh, and uh, uh, deliver on those uh, uh, promises uh, in the interest of their own country, I would say, and in the interest of uh, other countries uh, in the region. But for that, I think what is really important is uh, to make sure that there is a government uh, that has writ across Afghanistan, because poppy cultivation takes place in places where uh, in the past uh, there was no uh, writ of uh, uh, the, the Kabul government. Uh, that's what we need to, we need to have a credible partner uh, in Afghanistan uh, that is ready to work with the international community. And it's not just about narcotics or, or, or opium production. I think it's about uh, uh, the threat of terrorism also. Uh, that also uh, is something that uh, uh, would uh, loom as a threat uh, uh, if uh, 
uh, we were to abandon uh, Afghanistan. And I think uh, the mistake of the 90s should not be made. Uh, and uh, the world uh, international community, uh, uh, the region uh, should come together. And uh, we are encouraged uh, by uh, the proactive uh, uh, approach that uh, the US uh, and Secretary Blinken uh, has taken. Uh, we ourselves are engaged in the region uh, and uh, we really would like uh, to incent see that uh, we as international community incentivize uh, good behavior uh, through engagement rather than through caution and abandonment. Great, okay. That concludes my English interview, but this is my personal question. Uh, of course, uh, you are very accessible and you are always very busy. So how this, uh, the events of the last couple of weeks has changed your uh, you know, uh, overall uh, uh, persona in DC? Like, of course, it's lots of pressure. You have given lots of interviews. So did it change your job somehow? It made it difficult or it made it easy for you? <laughs> no. Uh, you know, serving as, as Pakistan's ambassador in Washington is, is, uh, uh, is not an easy job at any given point in time. I, uh, and, uh, um, and I always say that, uh, you know, in, in, in Pakistan-U.S. relationship, uh, damned we are, and we meaning the embassy and the ambassador, when it is going well, and damned we are when it is not. So, uh, but... Uh, uh, obviously, uh, Afghanistan has been uh, the center uh, of uh, attention uh, here and uh, also uh, the center, central focus of our relationship uh, uh, that is the Pakistan-US relationship. And I think uh, as things settle in Afghanistan, uh, we do hope because we were friends before Afghanistan <laughs> happened and we certainly look forward to being friends uh, after Afghanistan. And, and that's uh, uh, the, the, the residual work uh, that we need to do. Uh, and we hope uh, that uh, you know, we are uh, setting the basis uh, uh, by coordinating closely on Afghanistan, uh, which I believe would provide a good basis for a strong partnership in future also. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador.